Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is the latest installment in the Budokai Tenkaichi series. As the fourth game in the series, how does Sparking Zero compare to Budokai Tenkaichi 3 on the PlayStation 2? Nearly 17 years after Tenkaichi 3 had released, Sparking Zero has a lot of people really excited, but is it really the definitive Dragon Ball game? How does Sparking Zero live up to one of the most beloved games in the history of the series? Now, I'm not just talking about whether if Tenkaichi 3 is better than Sparking Zero, in this video, I'll be exploring how the Tenkaichi series has evolved from its third to fourth installment, covering everything from game mechanics to roster differences and even game modes. We're going to break down everything that makes the Budokai Tenkaichi games so great, and we'll start by comparing the cinematic intros, which truly set the tone for the game. Then we have the menu design, which is something that's often overlooked in games, but there is a lot to talk about with the Tenkaichi series, as the menus have always done a great job of capturing the vibe of Dragon Ball. I'll also be covering the story mode differences with how Tenkaichi 3 focuses on the classic Z and GT sagas, with Sparking Zero focusing on Z and Super story arcs instead. Then we also have the inclusion of all new what-if scenarios within Sparking Zero which have proven to be very popular amongst fans. Be sure to stick around until the very end of this video because I'll be discussing the differences in the roster size, the combat mechanics and more much more. So if you want to relive some memories by checking out what Budokai Tenkaichi 3 did so well, or if you want to explore how Sparking Zero has evolved in the 17 years since the last installment, this is the perfect video for you. Hopefully by the end of this video you'll know if Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is a worthy successor, or if Budokai Tenkaichi 3 is still on top. Without further delay, let's begin my comparison of Sparking Zero to Tenkaichi 3. <laughs> Let's first have a look at the cinematic intros for each of the games. Sparking Zero introduces some impressive improvements in visual fidelity, but it's undeniable that the Budokai Tenkaichi 3 intro still holds a distinctive charm which is just rooted in nostalgia. Because of the limitations of the PlayStation 2 era, it meant that Tenkaichi 3 relied on a stylistic pre-rendered animation which despite it being low resolution, it still was able to pack a solid punch. The Tenkaichi 3 intro was full of energy it was fast paced with characters entering and exiting the frame in quick succession, giving players an immediate adrenaline rush as soon as they booted the game up. We had Broly and Janumba teaming up, as well as an iconic clash between Gogeta and Broly. On the other hand, Sparking Zero takes advantage of modern hardware, as each scene within the cinematic intro is filled with so many environmental effects, expressive character animations, with better framing and camera movements, the Sparking Zero intro really feels feels a lot more cinematic. But again, it's hard to knock the Tenkaichi 3 intro because it was edited in a way to suit the limitations of the PlayStation 2. But despite this, Tenkaichi 3's intro was able to channel the energy of the original anime. And I think that it does this a bit better than Sparking Zero, with Sparking Zero's intro feeling way too polished in some areas. In terms of music, in Europe and Japan, Budokai Tenkaichi 3 had the incredible original song titled Super Survivor, sung by Hiro Nobu Kageyama, the man who did the Dragon Ball Z openings and so much more with the series, his music had given the Tenkaichi 3 intro an amazing energetic vibe. Sparking Zero on the other hand had opted for using the Limit Break X Survivor, the second opening for Dragon Ball Super, which was used for the Tournament of Power arc. While it's a great song, my nostalgia goggles don't allow me to say that it's better than Super Survivor. In terms of menu design, there are a lot of differences between Sparking Zero and Tenkaichi 3, with the PlayStation 2 game opting for a 2D menu layout, with the backgrounds being completely animated in a 2D anime art style. And honestly, I've always been a fan of how Tenkaichi 3 had handled its menus. As you navigate through the menu options with commentary from Trunks, Goten, Gohan, and Videl, then when you enter an option like Dragon history, the entire background is animated, with Goku talking you through the different story arcs of the series. It's a familiar but fast-paced way to navigate through the game. Contrastingly, Sparking Zero not only revamps but improves upon the menus, as they are completely fully interactive 3D environments, 
as you select between different options, Goku is seen traveling to and from iconic Dragon Ball settings, as he teleports from one iconic location to another. It's an incredibly immersive and creative way to do their menu design, like on the shop and customize section, Goku is on Master Roshi's island, and we see Roshi holding up this magazine that he is reading, and when Goku leaves this location, the magazine drops revealing Roshi reading a dirty magazine. So these main menus extend beyond just fan service as it captures the humor of the series and the personalities of the characters in something as trivial as the menu screen. Now there's a huge difference between how these story modes are handled within Tenkaichi 3 and Sparking Zero. Each of the games takes on a unique approach in terms of retelling the Dragon Ball story, with Tenkaichi 3 having scenarios based upon the different Dragon Ball Z sagas, and in addition to this, there are scenarios for the movies, Dragon Ball GT, Dragon Ball, and there is a unique additional scenario called What If Saga. This is made up of four fights which didn't happen in the series but almost did. It involves Goku visiting Penguin Village and battling Arale, Android 16 being sent back in time to kill Goku when he was a kid, but Android 8 having befriended Goku ends up battling Android 16 for the fate of Goku. Now Galaxy Battle is an interesting what if where the Saiyans find out about Frieza's plan to destroy planet Vegeta. Vegeta with his father and Fasha work together with Bardock in order to destroy Frieza. Now the fourth and final What If episode is called Unexpected Help, and this is where Mecha Frieza arrives on Earth with his father, but with Goku not having returned to Earth yet, Devil Man appears and stands in his way. The battle scenarios of Tenkaichi 3 story mode is pretty straightforward, with there being minimal dialogue interactions, and the story unfolding in a very linear manner. While it's not very detailed, it is very comprehensive with the amount of story that is told there. Contrastingly, Sparking Zero is a bit more character focused with its story mode, as you have the option to select from 8 characters in episode battle and play through their respective story in the series. This includes Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, Future Trunks, Frieza, Goku Black and Jiren. And the episode battles are focused only on the Dragon Ball Z sagas and Dragon Ball Super. And this leaves the GT story arcs as well as the Dragon Ball movies not really covered within the story mode. Sparking Zero does make up for this by offering us alternative story paths and what if scenarios which alter the events of the original story. And this is way more in depth than the what if sagas from Tenkaichi 3, which were pretty much one off isolated battles, but in Sparking Zero, these alternative story paths spiral into fully actualized complete arcs, and they are accompanied with detailed cutscenes and unique dialogue. So instead of merely speculating on how Vegeta and Trunks would have defeated Cell, Sparking Zero expands upon this scenario, allowing players to fight through an intense and interactive experience, which alters the original Dragon Ball story while also staying true to the essence of it. Another great example of a what-if scenario within Sparking Zero is the inclusion of the Gohan Black storyline. Thanks to these what if story paths in Sparking Zero, it allows for a lot more replayability once you complete the main campaign for each of the characters, you can go back and really challenge yourself by taking alternative routes which tell a fully actualized story. So while Sparking Zero doesn't tell the story of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball GT and it doesn't explore any of the movies, I think there is scope for expansion in the future via DLC, so I do look forward to seeing what more additions are made to the Sparking Zero story mode. Also within the story mode of Sparking Zero, there's an option to shift into first person perspective, which allows you to re-experience iconic Dragon Ball moments directly through the eyes of the characters. Like during the Saiyan Saga, you can switch to Raditz's perspective as he watches Piccolo charge up his special beam cannon, and this was lacking in Tenkaichi 3 which mostly told the story via a third person perspective. Sparking Zero allows you to see the perspective of Goku being crushed by Great Ape Vegeta, or watching Cell about to explode as Goku teleports him away. While it's not anything huge, I feel like the addition of the first person perspective in the story mode adds something unique and different while replaying through moments of the 
series which we've seen countless times in other games. Now when it comes to combat mechanics, Sparking Zero has modernized everything about Tenkaichi 3's arena styled combat by adding new core mechanics like Shot Dash, Revenge Counter, Vanishing Assaults and so much more. Shot Dashes allow you to zip past attacks and seemingly chain into powerful moves. Revenge Combos on the other hand allow you to counter while your opponent is in mid combo, thus adding high stakes reversals to the game which makes the gameplay feel so reminiscent to the original anime. Both games also had environmental interaction, where as you fight, the environment around you is destroyed. Now this has entirely been overhauled in Sparking Zero. Tenkaichi 3 featured destructible environments along with a day and night cycle, which had cleverly allowed characters who were able to transform into Azaru to use the power of the moon to do so. While watching a lot of the videos of the developers speaking about Sparking Zero, they had constantly banged on about immersion. They wanted the environment and settings that the characters were fighting within to feel highly detailed and to be very destructible, so that your surroundings dynamically respond to things like transformations and ultimate attacks. In Sparking Zero, damage caused by super moves leave a lasting impact on the environment, and due to the limitations of the PS2 era, a lot of those old games used to entirely swap out the map once a super move was done, but this is far from the case in Sparking Zero. In terms of character roster, Tenkaichi 3 has 161 characters, with a solid mix of main cast characters and side characters, as well as including obscure individuals from the series and the movies. Because of how many characters were included within Tenkaichi 3, it's part of the reason why it is so highly regarded. I mean, where else are you going to be able to pick characters like Devilman, Apul, or even some of the Great Ape transformations? Now on launch, Sparking Zero has 182 characters, but despite having such a huge list of characters, there are still a lot of fan favorite characters missing that were present in Tenkaichi 3. Most notably, there are characters from GT and the original Dragon Ball series not here, and even some characters from the Dragon Ball Z movies. In those 17 years, from Tenkaichi 3 to Sparking Zero, Dragon Ball Super had become a thing, so it makes sense that Sparking Zero focuses more on that series, as they made sure to include characters like the Pride Troopers like Jiren, Topo, and even Universe 2 characters like Rib Rian. Fans of Tenkaichi 3 have been very vocal for the emission of certain characters, like Great Saiyaman 2 which is Videl as the Great Saiyaman. Previously in Tenkaichi 3 she was playable as a separate character, but now she only appears in that outfit as a part of Gohan's ultimate attack. So if the character model is made, then it's likely that she may appear as DLC, but then you have other emissions like the Supreme Kai and Kibito. Supreme Kai appears within game menus, so again, similar to Great Saiyaman 2, if his model is made, I can expect him to be included, and if he is going to be, then Kibito Kai can also be added to the list. Now, a lot of the Great Ape characters like Great Ape Nappa, Bardock, Tells, and Fasha are not included. Now, these forms were popular, especially for adding a lot of variety to these Saiyan transformations, aside from then transforming into Super Saiyan. Some notable filler and movie characters who are present in Tenkaichi 3 haven't made it within Sparking Zero. Notable emissions include Salsa, Zangya, as well as Pycon. And then you have characters from Dragon Ball GT which is very underrepresented in this game, as not even Super 17 or Nuvo Shenron have made the cut. And even more puzzling than that, characters from the original Dragon Ball series are nowhere in this game aside from Kid Goku. So we're missing Demon King Piccolo, Tambourine, General Tao, General Blue, and even Grandpa Gohan, all of whom were playable in Tenkaichi 3. Now I'm not too concerned because Sparking Zero already has a massive roster and they have left a lot of room for future DLC where they can add all of these missing characters so that Sparking Zero is the definitive Dragon Ball game with the largest roster ever. During the days of the PlayStation 2, local multiplayer co-op was a huge thing, and Tenkaichi 3 had this via split-screen co-op, something which Sparking Zero understandably hasn't focused on, as it's instead paid more attention to online multiplayer mode. A lot of people fondly remember the split-screen local multiplayer experience, and the developers of Sparking Zero tried to include this within the game, but it proved to be too difficult because of the highly detailed environments that they had created. So for this reason, local split-screen multiplayer at the moment is restricted to the hyperbolic time chamber, a fighting arena which literally has no detail, so it's not intensive on systems to run a 
split screen experience for multiplayer mode. On the other hand, Sparking Zero has a solid matchmaking system for online mode, there's team battles along with online tournaments. So I feel like it's a pretty worthy trade-off and you're not really missing out on much. The split screen mode is still there if you're okay with playing in the hyperbolic time chamber. Now, Tenkaichi 3 had an encyclopedia called Character Reference where you learn information about the characters via Chi-Chi's commentary. Now, this feature has returned within Sparking Zero, but instead of Chi-Chi just talking on her own, Bulma and Videl have been added to the mix. Their inclusion really does make it feel like a group chat between these two characters as they're discussing fun details about the Dragon Ball characters. Sparking Zero has also introduced character customization along with collectibles, as the game has a pretty expansive item shop where you can unlock costumes, voices and music, which allows you to alter the appearance of your characters unlike anything that we've seen within Tenkaichi 3. Now, for example, Goku has 21 costumes, which span from several different outfits that he's worn in the series. So with the added commentary dialogue, as well as the customization options, Sparking Zero, even in these small areas, has built upon everything that was established within Tenkaichi 3. So that was my comparison of Sparking Zero with Tenkaichi 3. We've talked about everything from the cinematic intro to the game gameplay mechanics and these story modes, but I now want to hand over the discussion to all of you. What do you guys think about the similarities and differences between Tenkaichi 3 and Sparking Zero? Do you prefer the nostalgic PlayStation 2 era of the Tenkaichi series? Or are you happy with how Sparking Zero has evolved the series into the modern era? Do let me know your thoughts about this comparison between Sparking Zero and Tenkaichi 3. If there's anything that I've forgotten to mention within my comparison video, then let me know by continuing the discussion in the comments. And lastly, thanks for making it to the end of this video, and I cannot wait to see you in my next Dragon Ball video. A massive thank you goes out to all of my amazing Patreon supporters for helping to make this video possible. If you also want to support the channel and see your name in the end of my videos, then check out my Patreon, which has loads of perks like early video access and so much more. Thank you for sticking around till the end of the video, and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.